Jeff, I thought the first words out of your mouth were going to be about my valiant but ultimately failed effort to get the Fed chair to give us a number of the balance sheet of where he's going. Um, he did not want to give us a number. I was hoping that maybe we'd get one. And he also wouldn't actually confirm, Will, that there is a discussion underway to reduce the balance sheet, but maybe he sort of did. Is it part of a whole package of things that we'll now have to wait for? But at the moment, the balance sheet reduction remains as is with something of a tweak to the policy that governs it. Uh, I think ultimately his listing and notating of all of the things that are troubling uh, the Fed right now in terms of the economic outlook from global economic weakness to the shutdown, are, and, and that's the reason for the pause. Here's what he talked about, about the case for uh, interest rates right now. The case for raising rates has weakened somewhat. The traditional case for rate increases is to protect the economy from risks that arise when rates are too low for too long, particularly, particularly the risk of too high inflation. Over the past few months, that risk appears to have diminished. And it's the other risks, Wolf, that ultimately are animating Fed policy right now. Uh, they're, they're pausing, and I guess they're waiting until the, the smoke clears a little bit till they figure out what their next steps are. Okay, Steve, thanks very much. Uh, let's bring in Rick Santelli as well. Rick, uh, your, your take on the reaction in the dollar in particular, because I guess we'd expected a, a, a dovish uh, tone from the Fed chair. Are you surprised to see quite such a, a move lower, given particularly how dovish other central banks have been of late? No, as a matter of fact, I do believe we talked about this exact outcome yesterday on the closing bell exchange, that the more you highlight the balance sheet and the more investors get a sense that there isn't a stencil, there isn't a game plan, and it's uh, purely based on what the Federal Reserve sees, how they think the tapering is affecting the market, even though they have no idea historically or any way to model it, uh, that is going to be a bearish signal for the dollar. It's going to... Uh, accentuate what's going on in China. Now listen, I don't have any real inside sources in China, but the more I look at the dollar and how it's behaving against the Chinese Yuan, the more I think that there's people somewhere that know more than we do, the move is fairly aggressive. Uh, with respect to all the rest of it, listen, I have great respect for Peter Bookfar, and I totally understand the notion of give them candy and let them eat cake. Here's the problem though. It all sounds fine, and I wish they could be more aggressive. But the markets and investors suffer from Stockholm Syndrome. The Fed basically is the captor and the benefactor. And that relationship, to try to normalize that, is going to take time. There's going to be a give and take both by the markets and investors and the FOMC committee and Jay Powell. And I think that he is doing a very good job of trying to handle that. If I had my druthers, I would, like Peter, like to see more normalization. But this isn't like an addict where you just pull all the drugs out and lock them in a room. This is a global uh, economy. We are a huge piece of it. And I think that trying to make it work means you have to give a little more candy than you want. I get that. I think it's a much better scenario than Janet Yellen or Ben Bernanke when we get lost in all the modeling and the economic jargon. I think he's moving in a pragmatic fashion, and I think he's trying to uh, find that feedback loop with investors, markets, and the economy that works under current conditions. So we did a count, thank you, Christopher, our intern, for figuring out that Fed Chair Powell said the word patient in his news conference, Steve, a total of eight times. Great so, graphic I mean, this as is well clearly, to this, is, this is a pivot. <laughs> this, is a, this is his new policy stand, Steve. So how, how is the market who, the market, investors like to look forward, and I guess the market is data dependent a little bit as well, but how should we think about patient? What does that mean for the Fed's next move and when? A lot of things, Sarah. And I think one of the things the Fed is gonna be patient for is it won't raise, raise rates until it feels like the market has made up its mind that that's what it wants the Fed to do. Um, and I think one of the things it's gonna wait for then is the market, when things clear, and I think the Fed <clears throat> it was probably a 50-50 proposition getting that last rate hike in, but things turned. And one of the things that turned, Sarah, was the market itself. And one of the things we have to figure out is, was the market right about that? And we don't really know that that's the case yet, right? Because, you know, you got the kind of ADP employment data we got today. You get, you're expecting strong jobs growth on Friday. The claims numbers have been very low. We really haven't seen, at least in the current economic data, 
the kind of declines that really would justify the market's fears that were so present. And by the way, Sarah, am I wrong to say the market has kind of changed its mind about how concerned it was a month ago? I mean, I definitely think that, that some of those recession risks and fears were overblown. And you saw that in some of the recent jobs reports. But, you know, the yeah. recessionistas are watching the dip in consumer confidence and especially the expectations components sure. and, and some of the yeah. guidance cuts from companies. But, so I think that there's room on both sides. But of the, the right. No, the no I agree. Here in general, though, but the point here in general is the tone from two meetings ago to today Huge. has changed far more drastically. Even last meeting. He was even last meeting. Bias but that, six weeks but that's ago. changed far more drastically than the economic data has.